Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. Now, most of the time we want motion that's nice and smooth, but there are times when it pays to have stepwise motion as in these examples. Now, this is fairly easy to do, but the tricky bit is getting the numbers right and that's where I'm going to help you. So for this project, I'm going with 1080 by 1080, so 1080 square, frame rate of 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle. So grab the rectangle tool, draw out a rectangle holding down the shift key to make it nice and square. Let's reset its position. Uh, let's come over and give it a kind of dark gray color like that, I think. Then we need to turn this into a replicator to make our kind of grid of squares. So let's come to object and replicate. Now this default is good rectangle and tile fill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the size of 720 and that five by five grid is good. So the numbers for this are a little bit tricky. And so what I've done is I've set up this table of how, how it all works. So this, this is the size of the grid. In our case, we've gone with 720 and the grid, which is the number of rows and columns is five. So you, you can see that I'm using Solver here, which is a really nice little application that uh, you, know, you can set up your, your kind of constants as it were here, and then it'll calculate all the things you need to do. And I'll give you this numbers spreadsheet, which basically allows you to do the same thing. So I've actually added all the formulas. You can see that where you input your values here and all those formulas change down the side there. So it's effectively the same thing. So I'll post a, a link to that. So I want the box to be very slightly smaller than it needs to be. So to completely fill the grid, the actual size it needs to be is 180, which is 720 divided by four. So I've applied a little reduce function here to get the box size. So the box size we need is 162, because that's the size divided by the grid minus one times the reduce value. So let's plug in 162 into the rectangle size. And it gives us just this amount of spacing here. If I were to go with 180, you see we don't have any spacing at all. So that reduction gives us this gap. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this rectangle. So right click, make clone layer. So this is going to be a sort of box that follows around the grid. And to differentiate it, I'm going to come to stylize and fill. And let's make it, I don't know. Yeah, let's go for red brighten it up a bit. So we need to find a way that this red box only moves into one of these squares of this five by five grid. It doesn't slide from one position to another. It clicks from one box to another. So first of all, I'm just going to set up an oscillation on the Y position just so we can get a basic animation of this box. So right click, add parameter behavior, oscillate. Now, if you remember, our replicator was 720. So coming back to our numbers, this here, the distance, the maximum distance we can actually move the box is the size of the replicator divided by two, which in this case is 360. So let's plug that into the amplitude of the oscillate. So that's 360 and you'll see that it takes it all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom, but not outside the bands. So to get it to click into position rather than slide as it's doing now, what we're going to do is we're going to add behaviors, parameter and quantize. And we need to apply this quantize to that Y position. In actual fact, I'm going to apply it to properties transform position X and Y because we also want to control the X as well if we had an animation on the X. So what about this quantize step size? So let's come back to our calculation here. So the step size is the size of the grid, 720, divided by the grid, in other words, the number of rows and columns, minus one. So that gives us 180 for the step size. So let's plug that in there. And now you'll see that we are actually getting the box clicking this. I'm just going to increase that 
oscillate speeds to 12, unless it moves a little bit quicker. Now you'll notice it when it gets to the bottom, it holds quite a long time, but when it gets to the top, it flicks. And this is because we need to actually kind of preload the layer with an XY position. So I'm just going to undo those two behaviors, the quantize and the oscillate, and I'm going to come back to our numbers. So the pre-offset here is the step size divided by two. So that gives us 90. So if we come over to the properties for the clone layer and enter 90 for those two values and come back to our quantize and oscillate, turn those on, you'll now see that the box goes all the way to the top and holes, all the way to the bottom and holes, and the movement is symmetrical in both directions. So that's quite simple, but as you can see, the numbers are not entirely straightforward and, and a little bit unintuitive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my grid size to six and let's see what happens. So let's just set up the replicator. Let's come back to the replicator. Let's set those rows and columns to six. And we just need to adjust the rectangle size because obviously it's now filling in and we don't want that. So the box is 129.6. So let's enter that value for the rectangle, 129.6. We get our nice grid back with the gaps in it. So then what we need to do is find some new values for the quantize. So again, we will need to kind of preload the clone's position with the offset. So the pre-offset. So let's look what the pre-offset ought to be. Pre-offset is step size divided by two. So that's 72 in this case. So let's enter that. So 72 and 72. Let's come over to the quantize. Let's check what these numbers ought to be. You'll see that the step size is 144. And let's just enter that. 144. So let's turn on the those two. Ah, and now something is not quite right. So the box is clicking, but it's clicking to the wrong position. And that's because when you have an even number of rows and columns, an even grid, so we've got six by six here. We previously we had five by five. You actually need to enter an offset for the quantize as well. And coming back to my chart here, you'll see that when the grid is odd, the offset is zero, but when the grid is even, we'll need an offset which is half the step value. So in this case, it's 72. So let's enter that, 72 for the offset there, and let's play it, holding nice and evenly at both ends, and slotting nicely into the boxes. So that's a little wrinkle you'd have to remember. So if even and odd replicators require either an offset or no offset. So now that we've looked at the basic mechanics, I want to show you a couple of examples of how to use this kind of creatively. So the first thing I want to do is, given we've got 36 boxes here, is to have a grid of letters and numbers. So I'm going to show you a quite interesting way of doing that. So I'm going to come to the top here, library generators and text generators, and I'm going to use file, bring that into a new group. So if we come over to the inspector and we click on generator, we can browse to this text file that I've made, box text. So that's basically got all the letters of the alphabet and all the numbers. So that gives us 36 characters in all. So I'm going to bring that in. And here is the text file. You can see that each character number is separated by a carriage return. And that's how Motion knows how to read the file. OK, so you'll notice that it kind of cycles through like that. So what we need to be able to do is we need to shorten it to the right duration. So my first frame is frame one, and that's set up in the preferences here under time. You'll see frame numbering starts from one. So you just might want to set yours up to be the same. So that means that if I come to frame 36 and I hit O on the keyboard, it shortens that down to just those 36 frames. And now you'll see that each frame has got a different character ending on nine. And just a quick note to say, make sure it is indeed the file generator that you are shortening, not the group. 
because you'll get into trouble otherwise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a clone of this file layer. So right click, make clone layer, drag it out into a new group. And let's turn off that original group with the, the file in it. So then we need to make a replicator that matches our boxes here. Now, don't be tempted to do what I try to do, which is to copy this replicator because that is a world of pain. And there's a kind of a bug there in the way that the replicator is set up. So don't do that. Let's start with a new replicator. So clone selected, object and replicate. Let's just quickly remind ourselves that we had 720 for the size and a six by six grid. So let's set this up the same way. 720 for the size and a six by six grid. Now we want to come down here and we want to turn off play frames. And then we also want to have a source frame offset of one. So this one's this one here, source frame offset of one. Now that's not looking right. And the reason for that is we need to come here to the origin and set that to upper left. And then there's one more thing we need to do, and that's to come to the build style and select by row. And now that's exactly as we want it. We've got the letters followed by the numbers ending on nine. So let's just come back to the file generator and come to format. Let's center up the text like that. Maybe just increase the size a little bit, adjust the baseline. Okay, and now let's come back to our replicator. Right click, add image mask, and let's select this group that's got that red roving rectangle. Use that as the mask source, and let's turn that group back on again. And now you'll see that the red box is selecting a character each time it moves. Let's make this more interesting by coming back to this clone layer and moving it on X as well. Instead of an oscillate, let's have a wriggle. So let's right click, add parameter behavior, wriggle. Now it's important the wriggle is below the quantize for obvious reasons. You can see there it's kind of out of register and that's because it's not being quantized. And as soon as we drop it below, it, it snaps to the, to the grid. So again, we need an amplitude or rather an amount of 360, which is the half the size of our grid. The apply mode wants to be add and subtract. Maybe just dial down the noisiness a little bit. And now we get this. So this roving letter number selector, which is quite fun. So for our final example, let's delete what we've just done here. And I'm going to set up a new replicator. So I want a size of 1024 here. And let's just come back to our numbers, plug in 1024 there. I want a grid of 36. So let's have a look, have a look at our numbers. So our box needs to be 26.33. Let's plug that in, come back to our rectangle here. 26.33 and the replicator, let's set those rows and columns to 36. So now we need to think about the quantized steps. So let's turn off wriggle oscillate, turn off all those behaviors there on the clone. Let's come back and see what our numbers are. We need a step size of 29.26, 29.26. Now, We've got a grid of 36 by 36, so that's an even numbered one. So we need to have an offset here. So let's have 14.62 for the offset, 14.62. And we need to have that same number for this offset here, 14.62, the pre-offset as it were, 14.62 there. Now the step size is larger, or the distance it needs to travel is larger because we've got a larger box. And that distance is now 512, you can see down here. So let's plug that in. Where are we? Oscillate. And let's have 512. I'm only going to use the Y here. And I've forgotten to turn on quantize. That's why it's going off the end there. So it goes up to the top, goes down to the bottom like that. Uh, I'm just going to make that brighter. Let's, let's make it a little bit hard to read, isn't it? Let's go for sort of that and make it super bright like that. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this group that's got that oscillating clone in it and I'm going to make a clone of that. So make clone layer, turn off the original group. And from this clone, I'm going to make a replicator. So object replicate. 
this is fine. Now we only want one row. We want 36 columns and we want a width of 1024. And then we just need to slide it over. Let's just remind ourselves about what that actually number was, 14.62. So we'll take the replicator, slide it over negative 14.62. So what we're gonna do is come back into the replicator and come back to the source frame offset and set that to four. And now we get this intriguing pattern. Now it's kind of animating from the middle and we can fix that by coming back to the origin and come to the start of the project and setting that to upper left. And now you see we get this nice kind of sine wave effect, which is pretty cool. And we could flop that around by using upper right instead. So it's kind of, it's, it's, the, other, it's the other way around. So there you go. That's just a couple of fun things you can do with this technique. I hope that's been interesting. Uh, as I say, the numbers are the secret and you just need to, to follow that template that I've given you. So thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon. Yeah.